It's literally harm reduction. That's what this is. And of course, even when you're doing the first baby bit, the first baby step of harm reduction, like clean needles and crack pipes, immediately everyone's like, whoa, hold on. You're saying doing crack is good. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not. What if I start doing crack because the government's giving me a free pipe? It's like, is that why? That's how you're going to start? Like that, you're going you're gonna to go to a free needle exchange program and that's how you're going to start doing heroin? That's the first time? I'm willing to bet there's zero people on the planet that have started doing heroin when they stumbled across a fucking free needle exchange, okay? A clean needle uh, program. You're like, oh, I was, <laughs> I was an accountant with a happy life and a happy wife. And then one day I walked past the clean needle exchange and I thought to myself, well, let me score some yak dude let me get that mud let me chase that dark horse okay let me just inject myself with some heroin dude oh can't wait everything that was stopping me from doing f heroin was the lack of clean needles <laughs> holy shit <laughs> oh my lord it's so stupid people are so dumb so <laughs> uh, it, it's just like it, it's really fucking stupid i think this I'm is it so you get mentioned at the end no we i've we've seen the original clip but we haven't joe rogan apparently reacted to this original clip i said visit tim dylan talking about you the other day you were never mentioned on the jerry clip the video they watched literally edited around your name wait are you serious so, like, the one good thing that they're doing with respect to rehabilitation, and immediately, of course, people are going in for the easy slam dunks to say that they're fucking crazy, can't believe they're, oh, like, they're, like, promoting crack. Okay, here, let's just look at this Salon article instead. Is Joe Biden handing out crack pipes? Right despite despite right-wing Twitter frenzy? Not really. Republicans on Twitter seem to think harm reduction equates to free crack pipes for all, which is not entirely true, Okay. On Tuesday, right-wing politicians and pundits suddenly began to amplify the entirely spurious claim that President Biden is using federal funds to distribute crack pipes to advance racial equity. By the way, this is the part of the broadcast where I react to a news article. Sorry to fucking salon.com, but I will be reacting to their news article, okay? I'm a reactor. I'm a react lord. This is what I do. The Biden admin will soon fund the distribution of crack pipes to drug addicts in underserved communities for the purpose of advancing racial equity, reported the Washington Free Beacon, a right-wing site. What's incredibly disingenuous and incredibly fucked up about this entire thing is that, one, this is a good thing, as I mentioned already. This is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. Giving clean paraphernalia to uh, addicts is a very good first step towards uh, treating them like human beings instead of criminalizing their behavior and their illness that they have to live with for the rest of their fucking lives. And it's it's literally a good thing. And it's it leads to less hospitalizations. It leads to less scrutiny. It leads to yeah, people getting less sick. Okay. There's less disease going around but when you're not sharing the same needles. This is a common practice that every civilized nation engages in. Every single civilized Western nation engages in exactly the same practices. It's the first step on a long sea of things that, uh, that the, uh, a, a government that chooses to actually, uh, you know, create a system where there's less addicts on the street would have to engage in. It's like the entry point is the first step. We're dipping our toe in the fucking pool and the Republicans are disgusting and immediately promoting counter propaganda agitational counter propaganda that makes it worse overall it's a good thing this is a good thing yes portugal did this portugal carayo and the hiv rate plummeted now it is an easy fucking dunk it's an easy slam dunk to be like uh, joe biden on black history month is giving crack giving free crack pipes his son hunter biden is an addict yeah dude perhaps that actually would uh, allow a normal human being to be more understanding of the plight that people go through when they're fucking addicts. One of the most human moments that Joe Biden had during the debates was when Donald Trump tried to fucking own him and be like, Hunter Biden, your son, your son, he's a crackhead. Your son's a crackhead. And he turned around and he said, yes, my son was an addict like millions of fucking families in this country and I love him. He's recovering and I love him. Okay? That was probably the only moment where I thought, wow, he came across like a fucking human. Because it's true. We live in a country where there are millions of addicted people. 
It's so crazy. You literally cry and complain about the Appalachians uh, getting absolutely eviscerated by Oxycontin when you want to make a right-wing populist fucking point of view against Purdue Pharma, which is understandable. And, uh, you know, I respect anyone who says fuck Purdue and fuck Big Pharma. But then you turn around and when we talk about, like, the actual recovery process of that uh, uh, on the back end, you're like, oh, no, that's crackheads. You're giving crack to crackheads. Constantly talking about addicts like this. It's so counterintuitive. It's so bad. It, it just... Giant further uh it just further agitates people it it further dehumanizes them when they're a victim of circumstance and it makes it harder to actually deal with the addiction if you treat it like a crime and not a fucking illness because it is an illness then you are creating a space where it's way way harder except anti-vaxxers on their opposition to big pharma you oppose yes dude because i'm not a fucking idiot i hate big pharma but if someone has diabetes i'm not gonna be like don't take insulin Big Pharma is stealing that. Don't take insulin, dog. Big Pharma's making money off that. There's a difference, okay? I'm sorry, I know. Big Pharma sucks dog dick, but also at the same time, you know, they still make life-saving medicine. The problem with Big Pharma that I have is that it's for profit, not that they make medicine. I feel like the worst part is these Republicans also bring it to a racial place and pretend like addiction affects no other groups. Yeah, that's why they're hyper-focusing on crack. I'm sure, I didn't even look at this provision, but I'm sure that this isn't just crack pipes. Here, there it is. Harm reduction grant program. Allocating $30 million. I'm sure crack pipes aren't the only fucking part of that. I'm sure that that's actually a tiny bit of that. A tiny fraction of that. It's actually about opioid recovery too. Let's take a look. Details of the harm reduction grant program that will allocate $30 million to nonprofit groups nationwide as a part of the plan to reduce drug-related harm, particularly in underserved communities. This includes places like Pittsburgh, places like uh, the entire fucking state of West Virginia, and also places like Detroit, okay? It's just, it's not just for black people doing crack. It's also for opioid recovery as well. And the reason why I'm using such racialized terms is because let's be fucking real. That's what every boomer over the age of fucking 40 is immediately thinking. Crack? Oh, that equals black people. That's the reason why the crack cocaine epidemic went on unaddressed and was utilized in a very different way than the opioid epidemic. Because opioid affected white people as well as black people, but a lot of white people were affected by it. But crack was seen by and large as a black only thing. That's why our way of dealing with the crack epidemic originally was to over criminalize and over prosecute crack cocaine, even though it's the same as fucking cocaine. It's just like cocaine with baking powder. This initiative would expand facilities colloquially known as overdose prevention centers, which offer fentanyl test kits, safe syringe exchanges, and opioid reversal drugs for people struggling with substance abuse and addiction, an epidemic that took the lives of more than 100,000 Americans between May 2020 and April 2021. These kinds of centers have proven exceptionally effective in reducing drug-related harm and have operated in Canada, Australia, and many European nations for years because that's what civilized nations are supposed to do. A government that actually is supposed to do government duties does exactly this. They see a problem and they try to fucking solve it. In America, what do we do? We see a problem and we're like, arrest, arrest this motherfucker right now. $30 million is a drop in the bucket too, by the way. It needs so much more. We need so much more than just $30 million. Last year in New York, such sites successfully averted 59 overdoses within a period of just three weeks. Safe consumption sites are good. It is a way to aid people in their efforts towards recovery. And these disingenuous, who's probably, whose fucking relatives, whose near and distant relatives are also addicted to opiates, would benefit from this program being normalized. But instead, because of how they're so fucking horny to get one on the Democratic administration, on Joe Biden, who deserves to be shit on, by the way, for reasonable things. And because of their insane, draconian, awful... Westoid Ameroid. This is like a USA only thing, by the way. This isn't how it is in other Western countries, but like because of the because people see uh, drug addiction as a fucking personal moral failure and not a consequence of the material conditions that you've been subjected to from birth. Okay, not a consequence of social conditioning, but simply a moral failure of the individual. That's the that's the reason why these couch potato Americans, they look at that situation and they pathetically refuse to recognize the way to solve this problem. It's easy for them to demonize people with no real voice. Exactly. Oh, drug addict? Dude, you're a fucking drug addict, bro. That's your own personal moral failure and you need to fucking bootstrap it.
I say take all the fucking drug addicts out of jail and put the Republicans in jail. Now, some of you will say, Hassan, there's a meth head homeless person down the street and I'm genuinely afraid when he fucking walks near me and he comes up to me and he starts screeching. Yeah, bitch, you're not alone, okay? We all, we all see that. We all see it. We're, it's a part of living in a big city in the United States of America. It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it acceptable. But the way to deal with that is not by jailing that motherfucker so he can come out of jail and then do the same shit but more fucked up next time. The way to deal with that is by having actual social workers come and deal with it. Social workers come and move them towards a housing first policy that is the first step towards rehabilitation. Sometimes it feels like these people don't want to solve the issues so they can keep complaining about it. And the more they complain about it, the more they can fucking, I don't know, act like they uh, have a difference than the other side. Oh, my point of view is different than the other side, Democrats, because I, I just, these, look, look, I'm pointing at these ongoing issues. It's so important to emphasize the syringe exchange program, especially because of the transmission rates of HIV. Yes, needle sharing is how people get HIV. That's precisely why clean needle exchange programs are incredibly valuable and literally save people's lives. HIV rates dip as a consequence of these programs. If you were ever addicted, if you're still addicted, if you have a loved one who was addicted to anything, you know trying to get them to quit cold turkey by like stopping them physically is not going to change anything. They're always going to find a fucking way. It's a long and very complicated process towards rehabilitation. A long and very complicated process towards rehabilitation and criminalizing the situation is not helping. As a matter of fact, it does it, it, it makes it worse. Bro, the result of these programs, not consequences. That's right. I'm going to grammar check your dumbass. Yeah, you're right. It is, it is results. I'm seeing consequences. Whew. Also, you can literally die if you quit cold turkey on certain drugs. Like Benzo, actually, as a matter of fact. Shouts out to Jordan B. Peterson, who did not die. Uh, when he uh, did the experimental benzo uh, addiction treatment. Cannot believe I keep talking about Portugal today. I hate this, okay? But God damn it, it's difficult not to. When talking about decriminalization and its impact, criminalization and its predictable and positive results. Then and now, Portugal's drug decriminalization, key developments since Portugal! Caralho! Asshole. Decriminalized drugs in 2001. In 1999, in Portugal... 369 people were dying of overdose deaths. In 2016, it's 30. The new HIV diagnoses due to injections was at 907 annually at 2000. Now it's at 18. The number of people incarcerated for drug offenses was at 3,863. Now at 1,170. This is success, okay? This is how you succeed in combating epidemic of addiction. But if we don't jail people for minor drug infractions, who will do all that cheap free labor? That's one way to look at it. Who will fill up those for-profit prisons? Yeah, it's just uh, fucking disgusting, dude. These data are promising uh, and show how overdose prevention centers will reduce needless suffering and avoidable death. This is Dr. Dave A. Chocksky, a New York City health commissioner, said back in December, the simple truth is that overdose prevention centers save lives, the lives of our neighbors, family, and loved ones. So here's where we get to the crack pipes. As one of the 20 harm reduction activities in Biden's plan, the HHS would provide safe smoking kits, which might include rubber mouthpieces for glass pipes to prevent injuries, as the fact check site Snopes has noted. It's this relatively minor provision with a much larger program that provoked conservatives in this uh, spin. Why do you think that they're only talking about crack when it's one out of 20? Why are they not talking about the opioid clean needle programs that are also a part of this package? Because crack is seen as the black person drug, okay, in perpetuity. That's the reason. That's the same reason why Joe Biden himself was personally a part of the war on drugs, which America lost. Drugs won. That's it. That's the reason why they're talking about crack. They are disgusting, racist mouthpieces doing racial agitative propaganda to whip up the fucking hogs in a frenzy of white supremacist attitudes without openly saying the N-word. That's it. That's the reason. And this is a good fucking program. One of the, the few good fucking programs that the Democratic administration, alongside Republican administrations, they do this sort of stuff too. This is when the American government is doing something because it's, perf it's impossible to avoid, okay? And it's a good program overall. And the moment that they're doing that, everyone's like, oh, fuck you, dude. Hunter Biden smoked crack. Black people smoke crack. That's why you're doing it. And it's fucking disgusting. You can very easily get addicted to opioids, man. Very easily. What happens if you fucking fall? 
What happens if you have a, 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 a accident and then now you're fucking addicted to oxy? What are you going to do? The U.S. continued its faltering efforts to stem opioid overdoses. Fentanyl-related deaths increased sharply in 2019 and 2020, particularly in the Midwest, West, and South, according to the CDC. From May 2020 through April 2021, drug overdose deaths exceeded 100,000 in a 12-month period for the first time. 64% of the deaths involved synthetic opioids, chiefly fentanyl. Fentanyl is a gigantic problem. There are, fentanyl is a gigantic problem. It's being used in a lot of the fucking street-level drugs that you find. Part of this fucking provision actually tries to give you testing kits. So if you are doing drugs, you do them as responsibly as possible. This doesn't mean it's good to do drugs, okay? Some can be. But ultimately, if you are going to do drugs, then do it responsibly. Test your fucking drugs to make sure that there isn't fentanyl in it. Because you can die. And many do. And they don't just put it in the fucking heroin. They don't just cut it with heroin. They cut it with coke. They cut it with everything. You can find it in the fucking MDMA. Test your drugs, uh? Well, yes, that's what I mean. There are... <laughs> test your drugs doesn't mean walk up to a fucking bag of cocaine like you're a fucking 90 super cop, cut it with a fucking knife, with a Rambo knife, and then put your fucking pinky in it and gum it. I mean, like, testing kits, okay? There are testing kits that... This provision will offer, this government program will fucking offer you. <laughs> uh, it's the fucking... <laughs> when I said, uh, you know, test your drugs, I meant, you know... That's right, fucking... Mm. It's pure. It's pure cocaine, baby. Oh, that's good. That's what I meant. Okay, fucking Miami Vice Andy's over here. Yeah, I'm trying to fucking test these drugs, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, anyway. Canucks. Naloxone kits are free at Shoppers Drug Mart, both nasal and injection. They will teach you how to use them. I always carry one, you never know. My cousin died from fentanyl laced in coke. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um, if we have anyone doing drugs here in chat, test all your drugs. It doesn't matter how long you know your dealer or how good friends you are. You don't know where the dealer got the drugs from. It can easily be in spike long before the dealer got hold of it. Be safe. Yep. What am I doing with I actually know somebody that got an eight ball and died after the first bump loaded with fentanyl. That, that's the crazy thing is that like, there are so many people that know this. Okay. There's so, there's so many people in America that know someone that fucking literally died because they did drugs that were fentanyl lace. Anyway, let's hear what fucking Jen Pasaki had to say about the situation. The fake news. She is just getting worse and worse every day. But, but in this situation, I agree with the white house. Um, HHS just put out a statement clarifying um, around some reports uh, that crack pipes are not going to be part of the safe smoking kits that are funded by mm -hmm. the administration. Um, but can you clarify for us, were they never a part of the kit or were they removed in response to this reporting and this pushback? Is the they were never separate? part of the kit. It was inaccurate reporting and we wanted to put out information to make that dogs. clear. What is in the safe smoking kit? Uh, a sm safe smoking skin may contain alcohol swabs, lip balm, other materials to promote hygiene and reduce the transmission of dise diseases like HIV and hepatitis. I would note that what we're really talking about here is steps that we're taking as a federal government to address the opioid epidemic, which is killing uh, tens of thousands, if not more, Americans. Uh, every single day, week, month of the year. Uh, we put out this statement, though, because there was inaccurate information out there. Or I should say HHS put out this statement because there was inaccurate information out there. And we wanted to provide clarification on the allowable uses for the HHS harm reduction program. It's not a change in policy. Uh, this program, though, is focused on harm reduction strategies, including prioritizing the use of fentanyl test strips and clean syringes. And all of these harm reduction so services uh, that will be supported by these programs are, are intended to save lives from an epidemic that we know is, uh, is devastating to communities across the country. That's decent. When I worked at a harm reduction clinic, we were never allowed to give addicts crack pipes, just little condoms that go on the end to prevent the spread of hep C. I think American socialism is just bullshit. We have a supermajority at the city level in Oakland and they close minority schools. What? One thing never mentioned is 99% of public efforts involve giving people access to tapering methods. Um, uh, so they can actually leave the addiction uh, without dying and shit, i.e. methadone clinics to get away from heroin and fentanyl. Yes, exactly. Why are drug dealers trying to kill their customers? Uh, many different reasons. One, 
If you kill one customer with fentanyl, then all of the other fucking drug addicts in the neighborhood know you got good shit, so they're going to come to you. All the other uh, heroin addicts are going to come to you and say, oh, he's got the good shit. I need, because everyone's chasing a high. Two, they might not know that it's laced with fentanyl and it actually fucking kills people. Uh, uh, they, they might not literally know that because they don't know where it's being cut. They're, they're not, the drug, uh, the drug ad, uh, the drug dealers themselves are 90% of the time not fucking making it themselves. They don't fucking know. That's the more common thing. I should have said that as the first thing, to be honest. But yeah, of course, it's cheaper to cut with fentanyl. That's why they do it. As a former heroin addict, if someone died from a bag, we were chasing that shit. Yeah. People always fucking tell me. I don't know. I, I'm wrong about that, but it's literally not. Uh, it's, it's true. If your local drug dealer kills someone with a bag of fentanyl, all the other heroin addicts are want to, they're going to want to fucking get that. They're going to want to get that because it's like way, way, way higher and way more intense. If you're a junkie, you're chasing a high. Why chase a high that kills someone else? Dude, why be a heroin addict? What do you mean? Like at that point, you, what? Dog, you're talking about people who are addicted to heroin. What, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you serious? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not like a reasonable thing. It, people who are addicted to heroin are not operating from a place of reason. It's an addiction. A lot of addicts I've known have held a death wish. They think they can't get, get, they can't get better. They're treated like criminals by friends and family society. They want to chase the dragon. If it kills them, they don't care. Yeah, I mean, it's like people looking for the first time they ever got fucking high. That's what it is.